Hi there, I'm Adam from Altitude Marketing. And today, I'm gonna to take you on a tour of Google's Lighthouse user experience tool. If you've been doing anything with web development or web design, in the last year or so, you've probably heard a lot about Lighthouse. What it is, is the successor to Google's old PageSpeed Insights tool. If you remember that, you would plug a URL in and then see, quote unquote, how fast it is on mobile, how fast it is on desktop. Maybe take some suggestions from there and try and speed things up a little bit. Well, PageSpeed Insights really only scratched the surface. Lighthouse takes things to the next level. It's actually the, the technology that used to power PageSpeed Insights. It's really been brought to fruition here. The important thing to note is that you're not going to find the old mobile desktop score, right? This is all mobile. Lighthouse is run typically on an emulated Nexus 5X Android smartphone device. It's not looking at your desktop site at all. It's caused a little bit of consternation in the B2B community where we at Altitude live. You know, why is that? Well, usual B2B site might be 5%, 10%, maybe 20% mobile traffic, but that's typically about the ceiling. So two years ago, folks would be able to say, well, our mobile site's kind of slow, but whatever, nobody ever hits it. Our desktop site's blazing fast. It's helping our conversion rate. You may be happy with that. Well, it doesn't work that way anymore. Mobile-first indexing is here. Google is basically looking at the mobile version of your site when it comes to rankings, and we know for a fact they're looking at the mobile version of your site when it comes to performance, accessibility, and security best practices, and, and SEO. So it doesn't really matter. I mean, the extreme here is even if no humans ever hit your site, still needs to be really, really fast on mobile. Um, if the only user is a crawler, if the only user here is web.dev, uh, still needs to be super fast there because that's what Google's seeing. The best, fastest desktop site in the world, if it's a dog on mobile, uh, isn't going to get the traffic it could. So that conversion rate boost or whatever you get on desktop really isn't going to help you. So make it fast on mobile, make it awesome on mobile. Uh, and that's the end of, of that little soliloquy there. Now, with that in mind, I do want to dive deeper into Lighthouse itself, uh, how you run an audit, and, and how you actually re, uh, look at it and use it. So this is all done here at web.dev. A bunch of different ways. You can do it in DevTools. You can do it in a Chrome extension. Uh, you can do it on desktop if you like. Um, I like to do it here in the browser. It's just a little bit easier. It's right here at web.dev, and I'll, I'll put a link down in the description for you. So after you run an audit, you see we did ESPN.com here. It's going to give you a basic overview screen. But you always want to dive in and click view report. It's going to give you much richer feedback uh, and suggestions on improving stuff, which is kind of great. So you see what Lighthouse kicks back are four scores. Uh, they're all on a scale of 100, performance, accessibility, best practices, and, and SEO. Of these, for SEO's sake, uh, the most important one is actually not the SEO score, it's the performance score. Now, why is that? Well, Google has a darn good reason to want faster sites. It makes its money in search on advertising. It has advertisers because it has a lot of users. It has a lot of users because it delivers really, really good recommendations on what they should go do and where they should go. Um, part of that is the speed of the site. And Google doesn't want to send users to a slow site because they'll put that together and they'll say, well, Google keeps sending me to slow sites. I'm going to go use Bing, right? Speed is important. So you can see here within this performance score, which looks low for ESPN.com. This is because of the amount of content they have on there. For them, it doesn't matter. They have so much authority. They have so many backlinks. They have so much content. Uh, this isn't hurting them. Uh, they can have a 16. Uh, you can't um, because you probably don't have the amount of content and authority and backlinks that ESPN.com does. Maybe you do. It'd be awesome, but I doubt it. So the first breakdown here in performance are these six metrics. Now, of these, two are critically important. First of those is this here, First Contentful Paint. So what is First Contentful Paint? Well, it's visualized right here. So you can see this white box and this gray box. This is load time, right? This is the spinning wheel, or this is the white flash that a user gets. Google doesn't want that to exist because if they're sending someone to ESPN.com and the user sees a white screen for two seconds, the user thinks something's broken and it was a bad thing from Google. Google doesn't want that to happen. Um, so that's first contentful paint. They want something to show to give feedback to the user that, yeah, this is fine. We're working on this. Now, the one that's actually more important than that is time to interactive. 
So feedback that something is working is great, uh, but a user actually wants to read the content, interact with the content, click around, do what they're gonna do, uh, that's timed interactive. So there's some published uh, metrics on these. Those two are weighted uh, significantly higher uh, than the rest of these other uh, four here. So those are the two that you really, really wanna uh, impact. Uh, first Contentful Paint Forcing is probably the easiest of these to impact. So that's really what you're looking for. Getting those numbers down uh, will drive this score up. Now on your site, I mentioned, you probably can't have a 16 and be successful. Um, ESPN can. For you and a typical site, especially in the B2B world, the point of diminishing returns is probably about 70. Uh, now we don't know that exactly. It's not like there's published materials out there saying, yes, it is 70. Um, we do believe that Google penalizes slow sites and at the higher end of the scale, now we're up in the 80s and 90s, you're really talking about the pure user experience. You're talking outside of uh, anything that's gonna factor into the algorithm, factor into the rankings. So get this to a 70. If you can get it into the 90s, there's a select few sites out there that can do that. It takes some really uh, intricate coding and really innovative development techniques to get into the 90s. If you can, that's fantastic. Obviously bigger is better. Uh, but if you're languishing down at three or 13 or 16 or 18, like a lot of B2B sites are, um, you really want to improve that. Now here's the great thing about Lighthouse. It tells you what to do. Not a lot of places on the web, not a lot of places in the life tell you what to do to improve, right? Right here, okay? So these technically are listed as, you know, quote unquote opportunities. It says here they don't directly affect the performance score. Well, hence maybe ESPN is a special case because they're ESPN, uh, but we have definitely seen performance score increases uh, by optimizing images and by eliminating render blocking resources and removing junk code uh, from other sites. So take that with a grain of salt that they don't directly affect the performance score. In this case, um, these are very, very important things to do. Now on the image side, uh, they want highly optimized images, of course, uh, so do users, right? Google is right here calling for JPEG 2000s, JPEG XRs, and WebPs, uh, better compression, smaller files, and your pings and your JPEGs. You know, other things like serving up your logo as an SVG rather than the ping, uh, all of that is going to reduce page weight. All that's going to increase speed. Obviously, good things. Sizing images, you know, if you have a 200 by 200 block, don't drop in a 600 by 600 uh, image and ask the CMS and the browser to shrink it down, right? Just go ahead and put 200 by 200 and size it right. Um, and then the last one here, deferring off-screen images. If a user isn't going to see something until they scroll, don't load it until they scroll. There's no reason for it to be there. It's invisible to them until they go and actually see it. So lazy load that thing. You can see here in the case of ESPN, images are really worth dragging down uh, the performance or the perceived performance of the site. And the next one, the render blocking resources, this is a particularly big deal on WordPress sites. WordPress loves to load a lot of stuff in the header that basically says, hey, wait, load me first, and I'll tell you how to show everything else on this page. Wait on that stuff. I'm important. You, you got to bring me up. That's render blocking, right? It's not letting anything else show until it's done. So a WordPress site will often have a very, very long uh, render blocking resources time. You want to eliminate them as best you can. The rub here is, especially in WordPress, that can be really hard. You need good developers to do this. Um, but if you can do that, that's typically the brass ring when it comes to getting your performance score and your speed up uh, on a WordPress site. And there's more things here, the deep stuff, the diagnostics. Uh, if you can affect this, great. Your typical marketing manager, marketing director, I don't think is going to be in here uh, looking at J JavaScript execution time. If you can, good on you, right? This is all good stuff. It would all be great uh, for this to not be red and bad. Um, but this, we actually do believe, doesn't factor uh, quite as much into the uh, performance scoring as things like render blocking resources and, and imagery. You can always see within Lighthouse too what you passed. You know, ESPN's ESPN, their code's minified, great, of course, but they don't have crazy redirects, you know, so the, the text compression is there, you know, the images are encoded the way they should be, so they do a lot of good stuff. They're ESPN, they're fantastic at this. Uh, you can see everything that they passed. Now, the next part of Lighthouse here is accessibility. Accessibility is critically important. Um, you know, sure, it probably factors into the algorithm, it's really part of a, a broader user experience, but at the end of the day, accessibility is just the right thing to do. You know, these are standards out there, whether it's WebAIM or WCAG or ARIA, it's all meant to make the web a friendlier and of course, more accessible place for people with disabilities. 
it is completely unfair for you to have a website that only works for some percentage of the population, not others. That's not right. Uh, you know, if you're talking business terms, cynically, it's not good for business. This is here for a reason. Um, there is some legal risk potentially with ADA. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, what I will get into with accessibility here is this score should be high because it's the right thing to do. Some of these factors you can affect directly on the front end. I'll talk about two of those in a second. Some of these are much deeper um, when the site is being coded and developed uh, or recoded. Uh, but this is something that is not optional. It's not an afterthought. You can't say, well, you know what? The contrast on that type is fine for me, even though it fails the standard. The standards are for a reason. This is to make the web a more fair uh, and accessible place. So speaking of color contrast, it's a very common one. You're gonna see this in a lot of Lighthouse reports. The fact is, these are relatively tough standards to meet. Now, it's not optional to meet them. You have to, um, but these are relatively tough, right? It's looking for about a 4.5 to 1 contrast ratio on small text and a 3 to 1 on larger bold text. There's a bunch of different tools you can use to check this. You can do it right at the prototype phase in Sketch. Um, there's plugins for that. Uh, you can also do it through WebAIM's Color Contrast Checker. Uh, we'll put links to, to more documentation on contrast uh, down in the description. Then another one that's easy from the front end uh, are alt attributes on images. These are important, of course, for spiders and crawlers to tell what the image is and why it's there. But more than that, these are big for screen reader, right? Screen readers. Screen readers can't necessarily look at an image and say, well, that's a picture of a sock, right? They need the alt attribute and the metadata behind it to say this is a picture of a sock. And they're able to describe it uh, to someone who is not able to read the content on the screen. So very important uh, for somebody to be able to actually get value out of your content, uh, regardless of, of whether they have a disability or not. And again, past audit, ESPN's good at this. They passed a lot of this stuff. This, this is all uh, relatively deep in there. Uh, your developer should be able to affect this. And again, it's not optional. You, know, you need to have this score high. The next one up is best practices. This is largely about security. I'm not going to dive too, too deep into best practices. Again, I imagine most of the folks watching this are going to be marketing managers, marketing directors. Um, this is stuff that you should hand off to your development team or hand off to uh, your web team. Uh, just make sure that they know all this needs to be there. You know, you can see Google is looking for things like, you know, JavaScript libraries with known vulnerabilities, you know, old bootstrap, old jQuery, old Lodash, old Moment, deprecated APIs, right? Does not use HTTPS. This is linked to, for some reason, uh, ESPN.com itself without the SSL. Now for a user, this is going to resolve fine. It's going to go to HTTPS uh, ESPN.com. Now Google was looking at this and saying it's a little weird. Why is there a link to um, an insecure resource there? And you can see what it passed. Right? It's able to see what JavaScript libraries it is. You know, all that stuff. Pretty deep. Uh, give it to your dev. Get that high. Really no excuse for most sites not to be green, not to be in the 90s for that. Uh, ESPN can be lower because you know they're, they're ESPN. And the last up here is SEO. Uh, again, this is not a one-to-one -one with your rankings. Uh, it would be fantastic if it was. That would be Google giving us direct feedback. It doesn't work that way. Basically, this is checking for table stakes factors, things that need to be there to be able to rank. Uh, this is not looking at the quality of your content or you know, your keyword research or your rankability or any of that stuff. Certainly not looking at domain authority or any of those deeper things. This is just saying like, yeah, you did this basic stuff, fine. So alt attributes factor in here as well. That's important for SEO. Um, one that's interesting here is, is tap targets. Now this is on mobile, of course. And let's you know, say you have a little like 10 by 10 pixel or 20 by 20 pixel box. Uh, a lot of thumbs aren't gonna be able to click that effectively. That you're gonna miss, you're gonna click the wrong thing. So usually about, about 48 pixels is where you wanna be, 48 by 48 square, square if, you, if you're going with a square, you know, a button, you know, 48 pixels uh, long or high. That is, is going to account for most thumbs, and, and that's typically going to pass um, this standard here. You know, Android and, and iOS both have their own standards that you want to look at there as well. And you see, of course, it's, it's ESPN. They're going to pass most of these SEO checks. Right? They're good at this. Um, you know, they don't have the page block from indexing. The robots.txt is valid, so they're, like, they're letting crawlers there. They're letting it be indexed. I, I think you can see why that's important uh, to, to SEO. You know, links have descriptive text, so... Again, making the user experience better, making uh, people be able to flow through the site a little bit easier. It's not just saying learn more and then they're going to end up at some random place. It's telling them uh, what they're getting with the link. So it's obvious and it's good. 
has a meta description, has a title element. Of, of course it does. That, that's table stake stuff. Just like best practices, there's really no excuse for every page on your site not being green uh, from an SEO standpoint. These are pretty easy if you have a professionally developed site. The last part here is runtime settings. This is really telling you how Google got there. Uh, again, the important thing here is the device, which you can see right here. It's your emulated Nexus 5X. That's a smartphone. Uh, this is looking at the mobile experience on your site. So best desktop site in the world, terrible mobile experience. Uh, Google only looks at the terrible mobile experience and never you know, gets to the good part. It's just not going to look at it. So make your mobile experience good. You'll make Lighthouse happy. You'll make Google happy. And you'll probably make more money because more people will come to your site and then give you money, which is good. So that's Lighthouse. Quick 10 minute tour of everything there is in these reports. The great part is these are very actionable. You're able to hand these off to a development team or a content team or a front end team and say, hey, this is the stuff we need fixed. Uh, Google provides a bunch of supporting documentation behind the scenes here to tell you what to do and how to do it. Um, and really Lighthouse at the end of the day, I talk about it in terms of an SEO tool. It's really how we use it. It's really a user experience tool. And the fact is in 2020, SEO and user experience are increasingly the same thing. So get these scores high, make your site fast, by all means make it accessible, uh, get the security locked down, uh, and make sure that you know all your SEO table stakes elements are there, uh, you're gonna rank better, and again, you're gonna make more money, so that's good. So I wanna thank you for watching that. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put them down in the comments. You can always go to our site, we'll put a link in the description at altitudemarketing.com, and we will be talking again soon.